Good morning. It is so good to be with you all and also all those who join us online. This is one of those services where we have more people who join us online than in person. We have a few of those, but uh, for those of you who have your coffee in your hand, uh, who are enjoying us uh, through the internet, we are glad that you're here. It is the beginning of the holiest of weeks, and we are walking with the Lord and uh, his experience of preparing to give his life for us. And so uh, thank you for coming on this day that our Lord was teaching in the temple. And uh, we've, we've got a, a great morning planned uh, of prayer and praise. Uh, I would remind everybody in a moment after our service is over, we'll go uh, into the Wesley Center where we'll have breakfast and we've got a wonderful meal prepared for you, so stick around. Uh, but we would like to begin our time together in song. I invite you to turn in your hymnal to number 172, and we'll sing all three verses of My Jesus, I Love You, Love Thee. Let's, uh, let's stand as we sing. Let us continue the spirit of prayer and go to our Father in prayer. Holy God, we come to you on this day, this day being awoken by the cool breeze, being awoken on this holy Monday as we journey towards Easter, as we journey towards what we have long awaited, the celebration. God, today we gather and we gather hungry. We gather hungry to know more about you. We gather hungry to know more about the love that you have for us that has taught us how to love. Father, we gather today as a community of faith, as a family, as your children, desiring to see your face, 
desiring to be brought up to you, and you come to us. Holy God, fill this place with your spirit. Fill our hearts with your love. Guide our minds with your thoughts. And God, remind us today that what we bring to the table is enough. What Mary at Bethany brought to the table was enough for Jesus. So what we can bring to the table is what God has called us to be. God, remind us of what you have called us to be. And allow us to clear our ears and our minds so that we can hear from you. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. God, guide us today as we begin a series of services this week. Fill our hearts, God, with, with something that we haven't heard from yet in our lives. Fill our minds with, with new thoughts and new ways of doing ministry. Open up our hearts to something new. God, guide us today in worship. Guide us today as we break bread so that we could be brought into right relationship with each other, shouldering each other, carrying each other, and sharing each other's gifts with each other so that we could continue to spread your love and your gospel throughout this community and throughout this world. God, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you so much for what you have called us to do and the people that you have placed in our lives to do it with. We love you and we praise you. In your holy and precious name, amen. It's a great joy this morning to welcome the Reverend Darren Isaac to come and share God's word with us. Uh, he's become very familiar to a lot of us because he is... Uh, become the worship leader for annual conference. So every year when we gather with the bishop and all the other delegates uh, throughout the Alabama West Florida Conference, he leads us in song. And so that is a great blessing. Uh, he is the associate pastor of the Point Washington United Methodist Church. He went there as a music minister and has since been appointed and uh, he is a licensed local pastor uh, preparing for a full ordination in the United Methodist Church. Some of our people are involved in the ordination process in our area and have gotten the opportunity to know Darren uh, in recent years. Uh, Darren and his wife Natalie have two children, and the youngest one is like, what, three months old now? Just a little itty bitty person. He's used to not sleeping. So this is no big deal for him. Uh, you all know that Cole grew up at the Point Washington United Methodist Church, and, uh, and Darren and Cole are super close friends, and so uh, that's why I wanted Cole to lead us in prayer this morning. Uh, Darren graduated... Oh, my. That's all right. Uh, Darren graduated from the University of Indianapolis with his undergraduate degree he also has a master's degree from Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary and has just completed his seminary degree from, um, from the Christian Theological Seminary. And so, is that right? So, so he's very well educated, well prepared. He oftentimes gets asked to lead music everywhere because he is a great musician. He's a published author and uh, has written a lot of music that gets played all over the place. Uh, but doesn't get the opportunity to be asked to preach as often. So I wanted to hear him handle the Word of God. And so welcome, Darren Isaac. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us and beginning our series of Holy Week services with what the Lord would share through you today. Thank you so much, Nathan. It is a privilege to be here worshiping in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite you to rise for the reading of the gospel, which comes to us today from the book of Mark, chapter 14. Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away. 
And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them anytime you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. After the triumphant parades of Palm Sunday, which we celebrated in churches across our connection, we now enter into this Holy Week preparing our hearts and minds to receive the resurrection of our Savior. Our gospel reading for this Holy Monday centers on the selfless expression of devotion to Christ from a woman with an alabaster jar. An act of extravagant generosity of spirit that will never be forgotten. As usual in this passage, we find Jesus hanging around in the places society told him he should not be and with people his church friends wouldn't approve of. We find him at a gathering in the house of Simon the leper and with a woman who in this story's name isn't mentioned though her actions will always remain a part of Christ's story. A detail the gospel author directly attributes to the words of Christ. There is not much mentioned about her, but based on the context, she must have had some means by coming into possession of a very expensive vial of perfume. Perhaps this is implying wealth or social status, or maybe this is an heirloom that has been held on to for the perfect moment. But either way, this woman offers it freely to Christ. She offers it entirely to Christ, and she offers it without hesitation to Christ. It seems that there is some special recognition that this woman has that Jesus is an honored guest. So she chooses to pay her respects to him with this act of hospitality that is so extreme that it shocks the room. She breaks open the bottle and pours this expensive oil over Jesus' head. We can only imagine how she felt when she was moved to offer such a sacrifice of praise. We can only imagine how important that moment must have felt to her as she made her way across the room with the bottle in her hand. We can only imagine the way it would feel to share such an important gift with Jesus Christ himself. But how do those around them respond to her offering this gift? They begin to criticize it. They begin to tear her down for being wasteful. They scrutinize her act of discipleship as a misuse of the budget and an improper use of resources. Now, friends, I have seen this happen a time or two in my life. In the church, 
and families in communities and in workplaces. Too often, we're spending our time comparing ourselves to others. Too often, we are focused so much on what someone else is doing and not focused enough on what we are doing. Too often, we express contempt toward the gifts of others rather than learning to celebrate what we have to offer in the body of Christ and learning to celebrate what they have to offer in the body of Christ. We can sometimes be caught behaving as those in the crowd are acting, complaining and judging, even as we are witnessing someone giving their all to Christ. Even as we witness someone giving their all to Christ, with no reservation. Now sometimes it's jealousy that motivates this critique and sometimes it's a genuine desire to be the best stewards we can be with the gifts in front of us, but in either case, I do not believe we are going to find where God is calling us to go by scrutinizing the path that others take. I do not believe that we discern where God is calling us to be when we are reaching to define what we are not. And I don't believe that we accomplish what God is calling us to do when we are tearing down the gifts and graces of someone else. Instead, this passage gives us an example of how we can define ourselves by our relationship with Christ, pouring out the very best of what we have to offer for his sake, authentically offering ourselves to his service, to his mission, to his kingdom without reserve, turning our eyes away from distractions that lead us to impermanent and superficial gains for our own glory, so that we may gaze upon the face of our Lord and offer our gifts to him through selfless service to others. Now, while showing this kind of devotion to Christ is something that is honorable in itself, this act is not only one of hospitality, but it is also an act of great spiritual significance. Though the story takes place in an ordinary room, in my reading, the author of the gospel places both the woman and Christ within parallel narratives that occur throughout the Hebrew scriptures, and in the process makes a statement about who both of them are. You see, throughout the Bible and throughout the scriptures, multiple times we are given examples of anointings such as this one. And in each of those narratives, the one being anointed is the king, and the one doing the anointing is a prophet. This takes place in 1 Samuel and 1 and 2 Kings, among other places. So placed in the context of the story of God's people, we witness a sacrificial act of hospitality and care that takes place in the house of an outcast become transformed into the story of an unknown, nameless prophet anointing the king of kings. An unknown, nameless woman prophet anointing the king of kings, ordinary, transformed into extraordinary through generosity and abundant love. Ordinary, transformed into extraordinary through generosity and abundant love. Now that's some good news, friends. 
And that kind of love is in front of us every day. These kinds of opportunities, they're all around us. And while some of us have attachments to some material things that we need to learn to let go of, so that we can more fully offer ourselves to others and to Christ, I'm convinced that these kind of moments of transformation don't only occur in the extreme. It's not the cost of the offering that matters. It's the abundant love through which it is shared that does the transformation. And this may occur in the small everyday acts of kindness that happen when we go out of our way to show love to one another. Now, as Nathan said, uh, my wife and I have two young children. Archie just turned two in November, and Mary was born three months ago. And so my wife, Natalie, and I have an opportunity for small acts of love and service very often. The other day, we were at a bookstore, and we came across this devotional book called Every Moment Holy. And in here... I found a liturgy that moved me so deeply, friends, and it is called A Liturgy for Changing Diapers. <laughs> and it reads, Heavenly Father, in such menial moments as this, the changing of a diaper, I would remember this truth. My unseen labors are not lost. For it is these repeated acts of small sacrifice, like bright, ragged patches, are slowly being sewn into a quilt of loving kindness that swaddles this child. I am not just changing a diaper. By love and service, I am tending a budding heart that, rooted early in such grace-filled devotion, might one day be more radically inclined to bow to your compassionate conviction, knowing itself then as both a receptacle and a reservoir of heavenly grace. So this little act of diapering, though in some form sometimes feels as base drudgery, might be better described as one of 10,000 acts by which I am actively creating a culture of compassionate service and selfless love to shape the life of this family and this beloved child. So take this unremarkable act of necessary service of Christ, and in your economy let it be multiplied into into that greater outworking of worship and faith, a true investment in the incremental advance of your kingdom across generations. Open my eyes that I might see this act for what it is, from the fixed vantage of eternity, O oh Lord. How the changing of a diaper might sit upstream of the changing of a heart. How the changing of a heart might sit upstream of the changing of the world. It is not just the cost of the offering that matters. It is the abundant love through which it is shared. And this occurs in the small everyday acts of kindness that happen when we go out of our way to show love to one another. And so friends, I wonder how many acts of kindness made by ordinary people in this room today have reached out into this community and into this world in ways that you will never see I wonder how many times that people of this very church have served as an example to someone and poured out their gifts without recognition or acclaim and maybe even received harsh critique. But in the process, they brought someone closer to God. In the process, they brought somebody into better relationship with others. In the process, they showed the love of God without expecting anything in return. Or maybe they simply brought someone hope by pouring out their gifts. We all have something important to offer. 
as we choose to move toward a life in which we celebrate our gifts and freely share them. We may not always fully understand the great impact that we have on the world around us. But in an act of reckless love and generosity, a woman with an alabaster jar broke open her prize and unknowingly showed one of the last great actions of compassion and care that our Lord Christ experienced before his crucifixion. Without necessarily understanding what she was doing, she anointed the Son of God and prepared his body for what was to come. And friends, in the same way, we may not fully understand the depth that our ordinary actions of love have when they fall upon those who are truly in need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness. Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived In the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Sing it if you know it your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, 
All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God Amen Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, one of the groups of people that we have around here that have, uh, as you shared, uh, offer extraordinary, ordinary acts of extraordinary love is uh, our worship ladies. Our worship committee uh, has prepared a wonderful plan for all of our worship services through this week. Remember that we have Monday, Thursday service at the Presbyterian Church. Good Friday service is going to be here uh, this Friday at 6. Tomorrow's service is going to be led by the Reverend Jerry May, who is the pastor of First Methodist in Graceville, uh, just right down the road. And uh, this morning, our, our worship committee is the one who is leading us in our breakfast. So we have Sunday school classes that are preparing our breakfast each day, but our worship committee has prepared breakfast for us today. So uh, when we go over there, make sure to express your gratitude uh, to them um, for pouring out uh, the love of God this morning. Thank you. Thank you for coming and not only uh, sharing with us about uh, an unnamed woman who loved the Lord well, but also demonstrating that love as you've poured yourself out to us today. Thank you. Receive this benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father God, the presence and comfort of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.